a hearing to counter terrorism. The uh, security situation in Europe has changed dramatically in recent years. In the first three months of 2015 alone, 154 people were arrested. So what is the path ahead? Never, ever, ever give my vote to an encryption ban throughout the European Union. As the dark clouds of terrorism stalk Europe's shadow, Europol TV sat down with Rob Wainwright, the director of Europol, the union's combatant for fighting serious crime and terrorism. Okay, Mr. Wainwright, thank you so much for joining us on Europol TV. Uh, can you talk to us a bit about the role of Europol? I mean, obviously you weren't set up uh, to work in terrorism itself, but your mandate has changed over the years. So how effective are you as a tool against countering terrorism? But for over 10 years now, and even before 9-11 actually, we've had a mandate on counter-terrorism as well, and that's certainly grown over the last 10 years, and it's grown again this year since the awful attacks uh, in Paris and in other European locations. So Europol is there to help the police to identify criminals and terrorists and to coordinate operations to prevent them from carrying out the attacks uh, like, we, like we've seen this year. How much do member states allow you to have access to information? Well, it's more operational certainly than administrative um, because we're in the front line of exchanging intelligence about ongoing cases to identify those suspects and to help uh, coordinate some, some operations. And in the wake of the Paris attacks, for example, we were able to share with the French authorities um, pretty good intelligence leads, particularly about the financing of, 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 the, of those attacks uh, immediately after the, after the incidents involved. But yes, Europol is not a police force, we're not an FBI, we don't arrest people, we don't have those executive powers. We're there really to provide operational support, intelligence support, and that's something that we're focused on um, in, in our field of counterterrorism. There are people who are saying that post-Paris attacks your role could evolve even more. And in the meeting that we just had at the Parliament, uh, you did mention that Europol is setting up a counter-terrorism unit, a hub for member states. Could you maybe explain a bit more about that and how your role could evolve? We need international organisations like Europol to provide a more effective response. And what we're focusing on Euro Europol, therefore, is providing that hub so that we can monitor terrorist financing, the flows of illicit firearms in particular, and especially the intelligence picture around these people that are going to and from Syria and Iraq. But do you think that Europol is maybe blurring lines? I mean, as some MEPs were criticising you for in the meeting, they were saying that you are blurring lines between what is national competence and saying what should be Europol's role. Well, I think we are, the, uh, you know, we are focused on providing the maximum support, of course, within our legal mandate. We don't overstep that. But what about the cyber jihadi and the rise of the cyber jihadi? We saw them taking over TV5 Monde. Well, frankly, I'm a bit surprised that, that we haven't seen an even greater terrorist dimension online because the range of uh, attacks, the, the, the capability, criminal capability that we have seen developed on the internet in the last two years that organized crime groups are using are frankly off the scale in terms of how difficult it is for us to stop that from, from really damaging our economies and, and our people's safety. Now terrorist groups, including Islamic State, are catching up using some of the same techniques as well. They're still pretty rudimentary actually in terms of what we're seeing. There's a, there's a long way still to go, but I think we are at a, a state, we're very concerned about the possibility of a cyber terrorist attack perhaps. We know that agencies cannot track every suspected or known terrorist, but how do we stop people falling through the crack? Because we did learn, or what we heard after the Paris attacks, was that the French authorities knew of one of the Karachi brothers having travelled to Yemen. It is really difficult. I think you're dealing with a large community of potential terrorists, of people who may or may not have, have gone to Syria and Iraq, may or may not have been to other conflict zones. I think in the case of Paris, you know, French authorities, based on, on, on the available information they had, had deprioritized the case because they hadn't come to notice for almost 10 years. And you know, that says something also about the limits that, that the police and security services have about how they can deploy their resources. We, we can't monitor thousands and thousands of people at the same time. Maybe we don't even want that, of course, in our liberal democracy. So this is very much about using the best possible intelligence to prioritize the most important cases. And part of that is about effective information sharing across borders. So why are you a Poland, say, not Interpol? Because we have um, better legal mechanism, uh, better expertise, stronger data protection controls and data security controls here in the European Union. Okay, Mr. Warrior, thank you so much for joining us on Europol TV. My pleasure, thank you so, thank much. You thank so you. much.